Ciao a tutti from Melbourne! This is Stefano from the travel photography website Mel365 and I am here on top of a building because I'm filming, I'm taking a few photos of light trail which will be a subject of next week or the week after. In uh, this video instead I want to talk about noise reduction. Uh, what can we do with dark table to reduce noise in our photos, especially if you do at night when you shoot handheld? What kind of tools I have? I actually have many tools, uh, too many probably, in a dark table. And I'm going to introduce also a tool which is dedicated only to noise reduction. And if you do photos where you have always this problem with noise reduction, then probably you should think about using this specialized tool. But let's get into the interface of Darktable and see what we can do. And here I am in the darkroom view of Dark Table. And uh, for this video, I selected this photo, which I did handheld at the end of a photo walk I had in uh, Moscow, absolutely beautiful city to visit for photography. And uh, as you can see, it's uh, underexposed, probably one stop. And the main reason is that I didn't want to blow out the details into the light of these buildings. But there is also another reason. I did this photo at ISO 3200 and I used the maximum aperture that I had on the lens with me which was f4 and I shot a 160 and a 160 at 24 millimeter I was pretty confident I could get all of the details to have more light for this photo I had to go to ISO 6400 and there was not something I wanted to do because I, I would have to introduce also more noise into this photo and I knew that uh, even if it was a little bit under exposure I, I could recover that into dark table easily enough in post-production and that's my first tip that I can give you with ISO and uh, sometimes it's better to shoot under expose and recover that into uh, post-production of course you need to know your camera and what you can recover in post-production and this is the photo after the editing uh, I added uh, a little bit of exposure uh, to the old photo and also to just the central part of my photo. I added the module for the lens correction and just because probably you know this into the corners. I had a problem with that lens and uh, I corrected the white balance of course and I added some light into the shadows and I work also on the highlights to take out some of the details from the building. If you want to know more about how I edit a photo uh, please leave a comment and I will add more videos on just the editing and which modules I like to use and the sequence I use it as well. Now it's time to go into the denoising of this photo and I'm gonna zoom in 100% into the photo to see the noise. Yeah, yeah, let me take it down. And you see that there is noise in the sky and uh, there is noise obviously also into the dark area and the shadow. And this is usually the area where you can see more noise. Let's look now for the noise correction modules that we have available into uh, dark table. And we have uh, four modules. And uh, of these four modules, uh, the raw denoise works more on denoise in the photo before the demosaic process. Uh, the second one, the denoise profile works uh, on denoise in the photo based on the camera that you shoot. The denoise bilateral filter is more on denoising the single channels, so the RGB channels. The denoise non-local means it's a bit of a subset, in my opinion, of a denoise profile. Do you need to use all of these four modules to denoise your photo? Absolutely not. Uh, personally, I use mostly only the two in the bottom, the denoise profile and the raw denoise. With 80%, if not 90% of the cases, I go into the denoise profile. And sometimes having too much choice creates a little bit of a confusion. So you should focus more on your workflow and see what works best for you. Now let's go to the denoise profile which is in my opinion the easiest to use and it gives actually great results. And I activate this straight away and you can see that uh, the photo has been already cleaned quite nicely. The sky 
you can see that noise is not anymore there and um, also the noise that was on the building is not anymore there but you may also notice that uh, I lost a few of the details especially here in the trees and also in the lines of the building the way the noise profile works is that uh, it's checking the camera that you are using and uh, it's matching also the ISO that you are using and there is already a profile that works for you. We have four modes to select in the denoise profile and um, these are non-local means, uh, auto, non-local means, wavelets and wavelets auto. Let me try to first go into non-local means. In the first part of uh, the setting is where you define how to pick up the pixel around the areas with noise and rebuild the area with the noise. And the second part down below is about how to use this denoise tool if you want to have it a little bit more aggressive and if you want it to work into the shadow areas more than actually is done into the auto setting here. You can see every single meter here. What does it do? Just putting the mouse over the meter and you have a help what it does. I'm not gonna read it for you because otherwise this video would take too long. What I like to show you is the way that I personally work and uh, is to use non-local means auto. And I do that because I find that the result is actually quite good and uh, the setting is also quite quick. Personally, I don't want to spend, you know, half an hour, one hour into the denoise. It may happen in a few shots that I'm really connected with, but if I shoot uh, many, many photos handheld or I have uh, problems with ISO quite often, what I would do is to use another tool uh, which is done only for denoising, which works spectacularly well. And I will show you to later on and I will compare the output of that tool with the output of dark table. The two meters I, I use the most are the one below here here and one defines the strength so how much of a strength you want actually to apply on the photo that you have in uh, if I apply more strength it's gonna correct more the noise but we also take out a few of the details as you see here in uh, the 100% of the photo so let's get it back to a default value and the second meter from the bottom uh, is about controlling denoising only in the shadows area as I said before usually you have more noise into the shadow than in the highlights if you want to increase the strength just on the shadow area you just increase this meter here now I'm doing way too much and you see that if I do way too much obviously you're gonna lose even more details into the shadow so let's go back one change I would do in this photo in the non-local means auto setting is to decrease the strength a tiny bit because I'm okay with a little bit of noise but I would love to have some of the details back I'm happy with the photo I would probably add just a tiny bit more of the details especially in the mid-tone and uh, to do that I go into the local contrast I activate this uh, module and you can see that I add a little bit more of the details uh, unfortunately in doing that obviously you add also a little bit of noise back into the photo I can increase a little bit more and that's it that's the photo that I would love to have I think that must be said is that uh, I am 100% into this photo and this is a 42 meg photo so it's really really hard that uh, you're gonna see this photo 100% unless you print into big format if you post this photo on any social or any website you probably wouldn't see anyway this uh, tiny bit of um, noise I am pretty happy with the dark table denoise modules uh, and uh, I usually stick with that but I fully understand that uh, you know if your camera for example doesn't deal very well with noise at high level of ISO or you have many many photos with a noise problem just because you do photos in low light I may suggest you another tool which is the Topaz Denoise tool it's absolutely fantastic I use it in the past and the new version the AI version is outstanding and to do that I'm gonna take this photo 
I'm gonna duplicate it and I'm gonna export it but without all of the denoise that I have done so I go back here compress history and I'm gonna export it in a TIFF format and this is the interface of the Topaz denoise tool I am now using the denoise AI version which is the latest version available from Topaz I am on a trial version I wanted to show you how it works it's so simple and uh, I loaded the image that we are working with before and once you do that you can do auto update preview or you can update yourself you have a three selections here denoise ai ai clear and low light uh, so for example for this photo i go in low light because that's probably the best of the three for the low light photo and then i do an update and it's all done it's finished uh, you can work a little bit on the settings here where you can remove more noise or enhance sharpness for example if I do a tiny bit remove more noise again yeah the sky now is perfect blue and I have almost no noise I have a little bit of chroma noise here below but it's something that I can live with and um, that's pretty much it uh, so much quicker than any other tool that I used in the past you can do uh, some more denoising here especially uh, over color noise but now let's check how this denoise tool works compared to the dark table I'm gonna save and import this photo into dark table and we do the comparison i have now imported the photo that i denoised with the topaz tool and here on the left side you see the photo that i denoised with dark table and on the right side the photo that i denoised with the topaz tool and you can see straight away if i go slower enough how for example there is more chromatic noise down below in the lower part here in the dark table version and the same you can see it here and there is a little bit more even here and the sky has been beautifully clean in both cases and another thing that I notice is that I've lost a few details for example into the building as well as you can see the trees are much much more sharper into the denoise topaz tool this is not to say that the dark table denoising tool is bad it's actually quite good to be honest with you and it's a bit of an unfair comparison because the denoise topaz tool obviously Obviously, it's a tool which is dedicated uniquely to the denoise of a photo. So would I buy the Topaz tool for denoising my photos? In my case, uh, as I said, I wouldn't buy the Topaz tool just because my kind of photography doesn't have much of noising problems. But if I would start, for example, shooting stars, then I definitely would buy the Topaz tool because this is the best tool to clean, for example, the sky. And this is it about denoising the photos with Darktable and I gave you a little bit of a preview also on uh, the Topaz tool. And here I am back waiting for the, the night to come down and do some light tray photography. You should check the video next week. Now please do leave in the comment which denoise module you use the most in Darktable. I'm really really curious. And I'm gonna leave a link into the video description above the Topaz tool where you can download an evaluation copy which is gonna last for them month and uh, remember to subscribe to the channel of course and put a like if you enjoy the video and uh, i will see you next week in the next photography video ciao ciao da melbourne no I